going to the Kamal Adams, Colts jacket, cars, purses, backpacks, some briefcases, they'll fit easily. Obviously, right the getting ready to go. We're about seven minutes from the on-time departure. Once you reach your seat, please step into the house and allow your fellow passengers to pass. Going out west. Going way out west. Once again, good morning and welcome aboard. Going out. Get long little doggies. Rawhide. Way out west. Okay. Well, I'm back to not using that mic because I'm en route. So I'm, I have my iPod Touch, which is kind of um, my device. Uh, in the last week, I guess the... Uh, Sent my laptop out for repair, which was a professional laptop for uh, audio, and it broke, and the drive had to be scrubbed, but then the screen goes black, and then the iPad fell, and that I had, and it, it broke, so I've had it for a couple of years, it broke. Uh, thank God I had this little iPod Touch that I can uh, make Skype calls out, which I did yesterday, to uh, people I had to speak with. And uh, so it all turned out, you know, in a, in a way, there's a couple of numbers I couldn't call, but I have a, uh, I'm thinking that the, uh, I'm not getting the harm that a, that a cell phone does, uh, because it doesn't have that same cell phone chip. The only thing you need is Wi-Fi to use the Skype feature. And, uh, that's pretty acceptable and does email and everything else so I'm just using it uh, the mic is packed up and we're getting ready to leave the uh, the annual Corova Beach uh, situation which was really just beyond expectation uh, this year and we were able to um, have the four-wheel drive we're way down nine miles down the 4 by 4 beach here and last night we were blessed with a with a young um, with a colt in the yard right in front of us. You know, an aging, a little older than just a little colt, uh, just just grazing away uh, within a few feet of us in the uh, front area of the house that we've uh, taken that we rented this week with some friends and whatnot. So I think I had a um, I feel really blessed to have had this. This time and fellowship and, uh, you know, over too quickly. But I feel like, in a way, it was really difficult for me um, for a lot of years to, to travel at all. And then I, I guess what happened is I got over my fear of it. Because, you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, I had a fear of flying and a fear of this and a fear of that. And, and uh, uh, you know, probably some of these, you know, fears are still there. I mean, you know, obviously uh, a lot of people are afraid of um, flying. And so I had that too. And I... Um, so it really cut out a lot of uh, places that I would be able to see and uh, people I'd be able to, to, to be with. I, I feel like, in a sense, what I've come to understand, okay, and, and if there's anything I've understood of, over this week of being able to reflect on things, and I, I like to bring you pods from the road, because so I feel like a lot of things occur that wouldn't occur otherwise when you're in a, a kind of a routine or a rut or whatever we get into. One is, and then I'm, I've been away from the comfort zone of, of music and production and computers broken and nothing works. And uh, so all that is needs to be repaired. It gave me a lovely break from it so that my I was able to learn a couple things. And I will share them with you. Now, first, uh, there's a couple of items of business. One, people want the article, and I'm... Uh, that I was reading from the other day about the alien demon uh, demonic um, agenda and and who runs the world and you know looking deeply into the spiritual you know kind of occultic things uh, that shape the leaders of the world that they are beholden to that give us the results that we get now 
the thing is, is that I've looked. I don't, you know, I can't really remember where I found the article. I suppose I should have bookmarked it. And um, I wasn't able to. And when I find it, I will, uh, you know, either post it on somewhere. I'll post it, either tweet it out or do something. So, so that article will be there. I don't know. Uh, it was um, kind of a general overview, uh, one person's opinion, and some of it, frankly, was not really relevant to what's going on. And some of it was a bit new age. It was coming from a non-Christian perspective. But it's so much tied in with a, with a lot of things that uh, people that are, uh, have studied the Bible and applied it to UFOs, aliens, abductions, which have been going on for thousands of years, by the way, uh, genetic engineering, all those things. And, of course, you know, even breaking it down to chemtrails, GMO foods, and, and a general occultic, yeah, a general occultic um, map of the world. And, and you know... If, if you're afraid of traveling, if you're afraid of going anywhere, you might just be getting a download of all this stuff, and it can freak you out. The reason that I can walk through the world is because I believe my Lord has, he's got my days, he's got me. And, you know, he makes a way, he's, he, he makes a table in the midst of our enemies, Psalm 23. So I feel, you know, I really take hold of that. And, um, you know, I, I feel like my confidence is increased from, I suppose, my knowledge of the Bible, my knowledge of the Lord, and knowing that, you know, having faith enough to know that, that he's got my path. And having faith enough to know that if anything clip that path, or if I was suddenly gone, that it would have been his will anyway, and therefore there's nothing to worry about. But when you look at the whole occultic mess that is um, this world, the idea that souls are, are taken out and then another thing inserted, which I believe that Arco had really right, and I'm, you know, again, remiss in, in having lost it, and I'm sorry, uh, I didn't think it was that important. Because this knowledge of being, you know, it's just I like seeing another author besides me talk about the idea of having a soul scalped and then, and then another soul, another uh, entity reinserted almost, you know, with this idea that humans were genetically modified to be, you know, were GMO humans to be able um, to be inserted, to be as a kind of... Uh, a vessel that can be then occupied. The only problem is, is that a soul has to be extracted, i.e. through free will, right? And, um, and then what goes on in that vessel is you still have the person, you have the ego, several different personalities. In other words, you know, a personality is shaped by the events in one's life. Every time there's a fear, every time there's a trauma, there's another uh, multiple personality formed in, in all people. I thought that was very astute. And as we review that information, that was very astute. And um, this common knowledge of being uh, having a, a soul extracted, that a soul comes into a body uh, to experience this world, okay, and, uh, and then leaves. And the soul is, uh, someone sent me a good, a good uh, you know, overview of, uh, I think it was Derek Prince's um, view of the spirit and the soul and the difference between the two, you know, I suppose you could say, you know, and, and it doesn't um, differ from my knowledge, but I suppose you could say that the spirit is that which is, you know, gives breath, gives life, you know, is connected to God. The soul has free will, and a soul can, can rebel, obviously, and a soul can do a lot of, you know, different things, but if a soul gets extracted from a person, and then you have a, the animating spirit there, you have aspects of the person, but you really don't have the person there, okay? Especially if it's being controlled by another entity, then that entity is the one calling the shots, and that entity is now the soul, not the original soul that was there. So you have like tape recordings of 
that person's life, and so they have a semblance of themselves without being wholly there, and they can even be aware of it and say, well, I've got to do something about it, and I want to, I go, I want to get right with the Lord, and, and, and I want my soul redeemed by Jesus, and that is absolutely possible. The other thing is, uh, this article was saying that Jesus cannot save you in the midst of uh, being abducted or any of these things, and that's absolutely not true, because there's too many testimonies of intoning the name, you know, claiming the name Jesus Christ and the power of the name of Jesus and the power of the blood uh, as a rebuke to, to demonic entities that are trying to extract your soul or trying to get to you. Now, when these people have extracted souls, they band together in, in a collective. A collective, you could say, is basically, or people that don't have a sense of an in individual identity, but they identify with a group. These would be people who either they're out of possession of their souls or their souls are compromised, even if they're still intact in some way, um, with the collective. Indeed, they cannot even survive without the collective. If you take one of them away from their collective, they'll freak out. They will, they will fall apart. Because what holds them together is this collective. Um, and we see it in politics. We see a political collective being as uh, on the left. It doesn't ever work. You say communism, socialism, those things don't work. But they are an embodiment of the satanic agenda upon the earth. Because collectivism is Satanism, uh, straight up. If there's really no difference. I mean, when you talk about one, you're talking about the other. They can only exist in a collective, and they can, they can only form opinions if the collective forms that opinion. They don't have individual opinions. They don't go against the grain. They will go along to get along because... They have no choice at that point. If one of them gets disconnected from the, the group, as I say, they, they, they have the appearance of being insane because they have no stability. And you can, you can you know, try separating one of them from the group, let's say, if you like. You could take them on a long drive or something, and uh, they'll start freaking out. And I mean, you don't have to do anything like that. I mean, it certainly wouldn't violate anyone's will. But... Um, you know, that's been my experience in, in how they are. Now, when they're with their collective, with their friends or whatever, uh, then they tend to become bullies and uh, very mean to people that are not seeing it the same way. And we again, we see this in politics uh, from the liberal perspective. Liberals are not liberals. They're uh, totalitarians and collectivists. And they can only think and operate in their hive, in their group. They have a hive mind. Uh, I would say that... Most of them are not even intact as human beings. So I, I tend to see them as a subhuman um, catastrophe or some kind of uh, tragedy that's happened to them that makes them dependent on a collective, what God intended. And when, when he made us, he made us all individuals. And, um, but you see it in gangs. You see it in um, any kind of collective organization where a person was kind of a nowhere then he joins the organization and he becomes a big, you know, big bully uh, where he was a wimp before. Uh, that is precisely what I'm talking about. And these people are, have, have their souls in jeopardy because if a person has a soul attack, they would not be able to conform to groupthink or to, hive, uh, to, a, to a hive. And the hive would reject that person until they were willing to give up their individual identity in favor of the group identity and then they gain a lot of confidence, they get talents, they get all kinds of things that weren't in their possession before uh, as an inducement for giving up their precious soul, which is their experience on earth. But the vessels go on and live sometimes a long time. Uh, the only time there's, there's a kind of a regret, I would say, is when they get older, the collective no longer wants them, so they then get cut loose and many of them actually do repent and try to get right with God at that point because they are lonely and they, they are other, uh, you know. The majority, though, um, become quite feeble and, you know, go into old age and have to be taken care of and, and, and have lost their way, you know, obviously, and, and, and kind of tune out because they don't care anymore. Now... All this is more subtle than you might imagine, and so it's not like an overt kind of thing you would notice. It, it, you know, what I'm talking about could be called normal life. You know, 
Uh, but when I see people that are very much intact as individuals in their older age, it's, then I realize, well, they're right with God. There's something going on there where they have a possession of their souls. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? They offer you the whole world, whatever your dreams are, desires, and lo and behold, you didn't have much talent as a guitar player. Suddenly you're doing Jimi Hendrix licks. Um, yeah, there's a lot of power in joining that collective. And when you join the Satanic Collective, it's a worldwide power. It's very strong. A person can go from a zero to hero almost overnight. So they all run and rush to get in there. They, 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 they want to find out how they can be a part of it as quickly as possible so they can win. And I understand that. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a trick, obviously, a deception. God gives us our talents by and by as needed. And, um, you know, we have to work to develop them. And, um, you know, the other, the other argument they would make is, yes, but if I don't join the collective, you know, or the world or embrace the world or whatever you want to call it, um, however you want to call being, you know, breaking on through to the other side, however you want to categorize it, um, the soul is lost at that point. That's the point of exit uh, at, is at the point of entry. And it's really a trauma that has to be inflicted on the person. They give that up, and then they become welcomed into the collective, and they become, you know, quite bold, usually, in asserting themselves in life and feel like when they're young they can do no wrong, and they, they feel it's such a great thing they want to promote it to everyone. And, um, but they are not them. They're not themselves. Anyone who's watched your 16-year-old friends change, you would notice... Yeah, they might be killing it here, but they're not themselves. It's like something changed within them. Indeed, <clears throat> I lost a lot of friends to that. And you'd see them change, and if they needed to lose weight, they lost weight. If they needed to be faster on the track, they'd be faster. If they needed to be better looking, they'd suddenly be better looking. Uh, all those things would improve almost overnight, and they'd say, you see, hey, look at so-and-so. Look how well he's doing. Uh, doesn't that interest you, they'd say to me you loser. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, my answer was always the same. It's like, no, uh, Satan does not interest me because that's, you, you have to play ball with Satan to get in. So therefore you have to sell your soul to the devil to be part of that. You don't even sell it. They just take it. Uh, <laughs> I would say in the long run, obviously in the short run, yeah, the, 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 the young people feeling left out and, and, and a bump on a log somewhere and, castigated as, and cast as losers and, and, and made fun of and all that. Sure, <clears throat> that's no fun. But those who suffered early, those of you who survived, which and many don't, but those of you who survived, your reward is, you'll, you'll be feeling your rewards now. And the number one reward you have is gratitude. You're grateful that the Lord kept you on the path you're on. And... Um, you know, the, 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 there are other people, too, that want to join. <clears throat> In my case, I wanted to join. I kept bouncing off the mirror. You know, I said, so what kind of, uh, I, what, so what exactly is it here? You know, and, and it, it's, it's supernatural, number one. That, you know, that passing through that thing <clears throat> is spooky to people because it's not run by humans, okay? It's very supernatural. It's, it, it defies science defies logic, is magic. And um, it's well promoted among the uh, collectivists. And, and it's just, it just, in fact, some people say that, you know, it's just a part of life. It's just a, a rite of passage. And I, so that I would retort back, oh, so losing your soul is a rite of passage into life when you need your soul to live. Absolutely. So when I say some music is satanic because it's evangelizing for this situation, that's what I mean. It's 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 uh, it's nudging us, um, controlling us to give up that which makes us human, so that we can uh, win. And then it bites you in the end. Many people adopt the attitude, well, I'll be dead before I'm 30, so I don't care. 
and 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 no, you can't talk to them. They're very very arrogant, and uh, Satan's very arrogant. So when you join that, you become very arrogant, very mean spirited, very calloused, and you know you you fight for the almighty dollar. I mean, you don't have anything else, but it's not you that's fighting for it. So when you have loved ones and people you know that have changed in that way, let's just remember this: You're, they're not they're not there. They may be killing it in some way, you know, meaning being successful, but it's not them. It's like a tape recording of them, but somebody else is running the show. And that thing is a supernatural being that is beyond the powers of human and can give people tremendous talents and powers uh, to, to uh, you know, tear it up. And uh, it's very tempting, you know, especially if you... Um, are like a nerd that's picked on at school. I've seen them go from the nerd that's picked on at school to the to the, to the guy wielding power and having all the chicks, you know. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's it's one of those things. And now we're dealing with a world. Oh, oh, the other the other important thing. And uh, this is for all you rock stars out there who think you're so effing smart. Um, it all leads to this situation we have today. You know, to the break of civil war, certainly the break of world war, and always leads into darkness and totalitarianism and a tremendous loss of life. Uh, the fact is, the connection to that reality equals mass genocide in the end, which is, I knew that at 15, 16, I knew. I'd ask questions, I knew, you know, I look at John F. Kennedy, the, the basically collective traumas, 9-11, Martin Luther King, all these were traumas, you know, but to the uh, collectivist, and, and, and that doesn't mean Republican or Democrat, uh, the collective is anyone uh, that's part of the collective of the world or part of the world system, okay, if you like. And um, the people that aren't, you see there's a war going on now to attack people that are still individualists. In other words, people who are still intact in their souls. You can't be a soul in a vessel and then be part of a collective. It's, it goes against your nature. You can only become part of the collective when they break you down, they beat you down, and they beat you down until you're so traumatized, you, you, you know, so as a mode of, 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 of survival, you give it up. And that's why I don't I'm not judging. I'm not saying, you know, oh, you're evil because you did that. You're, you're evil because you were weak and you wanted success and you wanted to please your parents and you wanted this or that. I'm never going to call you evil. I'm not judging you. I'm not, you know, you may have rejected me, but I have not rejected you. No. I am pointing it out so that people, I don't care whether you were an evangel of it or not, if you were a promoter of it or not. I'm pointing it out so you can get, you can correct your course and um, have the bliss and joy of eternal life and, and realize this, this life is a test. And it, there, there is no home to be made here because everything is transitory. Everything passes. It's an opportunity to, to um, fight the good fight of faith, to, to, you know, to run the race is what, is what we're doing. And, um, you know, and if you've got the Lord and you, you're, all, you're good with that and you don't care about the persecution you receive from the collective, which is the persecution you receive you receive comes from the collective, from the world system. It doesn't come from just random people or other individuals so much. And the fact that you've taken it, you've taken a beating, you've taken a licking and kept on, kept on ticking and all that, uh, that's the race that Paul talks about in the Bible, the Apostle Paul. He says, run the race so that you would win. You're running the race to win. You're not, it doesn't matter how uh, whether you're successful in the world's terms doesn't matter whether they throw a lot of rocks at you it doesn't matter if you if you perish on the way you've won you won okay uh, if the world calls you a loser you win um, if they uh, if you're not part of the collective and you, your soul is intact within you you win and you don't necessarily need to be um, uh it's a mistake to think that that people that are, uh, if you're not in Jesus Christ, you know, and saying this this word Jesus and all that, and have this background, 
That's not to say there aren't people intact all over the planet with all kinds of different religious backgrounds. Let me just make that really, really clear. The wheat and the tares grow together, the Bible says. That means people of all walks of life uh, that are intact souls versus collective soul, collectivized souls. There was a band that had a, uh, was a, like a one-hit wonder band from the 90s called Collective Soul. And uh, I bought one of their CDs. It, it, indeed, it was the same as many one-hit wonders. That one song that was on the radio was good and the rest of it kind of sucked. Um, how many times have you been burned buying CDs? That's why people don't buy them anymore. Um, but anyway, that, that term collective soul is a, uh, you know, kind of a, a nod and a wink toward the, uh, the, the collective. In other words, to be a one hit wonder, they obviously sold their soul into the collective, became the collective and became evangels of it. And their reward was to be a one hit wonder from the nineties. Where are they today? I don't know. They're probably fine. You know, people don't change. A lot of people, they, they get there, they stay there. But those of you who are conscious or you feel like, gosh, you wonder if, you're in, if your soul is still in you. You've, you've done so many things, you've seen so many things, you've been so traumatized. I think if you have to ask that question, it probably is. It doesn't mean you haven't done a lot of bad things. It doesn't mean you haven't been traumatized. It means that somehow your soul is intact, even if you don't deserve it. Even if you tried to give it away, as I did. I tried to. I admit it. I didn't want to just be... I mean, have rocks thrown at me, but it just, it didn't, you know, it was like, it, it didn't stick, didn't, it didn't take, whatever, whatever you, however, whatever, you know, way, now I realize it was the Lord protecting me the whole time, uh, upending the thing, you know, interrupting it, making sure that a certain thing, you know, did not happen, and it was just uncanny how it happened over and over and over again. There was a disruption, another disruption, a supernatural disruption. I'm like, Lord, if it wasn't for you, I would be over the, yeah, there. And it's like, it's not based on what you want either. You know, there, are, Lord also has written our paths already. And so, you know, what side, you're, what side of this conflict you're in is already predetermined too. So that a lot of you who, you know, tried to run over there and wanted to be tearing it up in the world system and say, you know, hi mom and your Academy Award or whatever it was, and all that didn't happen. It's just basically because that was written, that path was written for you to be on. You may not deserve to have your soul, but whether you like it or not, you've got it. It's intact, and that is you. And that you is the one that goes on to eternal life. That you is the one that, that you need to be intact in order to be redeemed by the Lord. In other words, um, you know, souls are lost here on the earth, and then they find the truth. You know, Jesus is another word for truth. You know, Yeshua is truth. And that truth is that you are, you, you know, that this is mid-process, that you are being formed through this, this experience. Your soul is experiencing this. Now, the New Age would say, you could come here as many times as, as the soul needs to experience things over and over until the soul learns because the souls start like a tabula rasa. They don't know too much and they need to, go through these lifetimes to learn their lesson or learn something they need to learn as we as they advance closer and closer to the ultimate truth which is the godhead i am that i am you know truth and that they are not separate from that i mean that's the ultimate understanding and realization of what we are who we are where we are uh, going the other thing is that the collectivists want to stave off any kind of salvation because they want to be reborn again and again, and they want to just kill it again and again each time and, and be winners and, you know, and all that. But to me, it's very much like winning at, in Disneyland or winning in the, the fun house or the, you know, the amusement park. It's not really real. You can keep getting the award and getting the, you know, how you can get, you, you, you throw something at a beanbag, it hits the right, you know, number, they give you a little... A stuffed animal. You can keep getting the stuffed animal and, and stars on your epaulets and, and all that kind of stuff. But still, it's, it's fake because it's being given in Disneyland. It's being given in the amusement park. It's not really real. It doesn't last. It's got nothing to do with really the ultimate reality. It's just a temporary fake situation that's set up for humans to conform to and run around like rats in a you know, like um, gerbils on a little wheel 
until it's time to get off and then basically it's over. So people fight for meaning, search for meaning. They do anything they can do to find meaning in their lives and uh, to try to ameliorate these um, bad effects of being on earth. They, they fail to see it for what it is, a, a temporary situation at best, not permanent life, not permanent consciousness, not a permanent situation at all, but a brief, brief test or trial uh, or a, a gauntlet that souls run through. Well, if your vessel doesn't have a soul in it, and you have your personality there, but not your soul, and you have an animating spirit that's from God and still connected to God, that animating spirit is what, you know, where you need to go, and you need to ask the Lord, you know, Father, you know, I'm a real screw-up. Is there any way back? And then follow that. Of course, there's, because he's in you. So, of course, there's a way back. You're still connected. You still have a spirit. You wouldn't be breathing. So that spirit, um, you know, in the spirit is where the answer lies. And that will lead and open doors and shut others and lead you to um, the state of grace, which is having your soul intact. Because, you know, the, it's not because of your merit or demerit. It's because... Jesus paid the price for your soul to be intact, for you to be intact. He paid the price. So you see, they can't keep it from you. And you can't keep the, the, the demonic entity that's sort of running the show while you're sitting in the back seat, you know, kind of enjoying your gifts that you don't deserve. Uh, bottom line, uh, there's still a way back if you can hear this message. It's, it's, you don't have the right to sell your soul because it's not yours to sell, basically. It's not, it's not um, counted. It's, it's whether or not you're in possession of it, you know, and, and the you that's you is um, obviously, you know, a vessel without you being in it is what we see all the time on television. I mean, what we see all the time when dealing with people, you see them do the oddest things and you, you realize they're not completely in control of the, you know, they're not who they present themselves uh, to be. You know, there's something missing there. They're only really bold and confident when they are you know, in, enlivened by their collective, which, which, you know, and then of course, there's all the attendant rituals that society does to make one feel a part of things, which is just a temporary illusion of feeling like you're connected to things when you are actually not connected at all because nothing in this world is connected to anything else. There is no such thing as a collective. It's a temporary delusion and an illusion that gives people um, you know, a lot of Zoom for, for five minutes and a lot of talents that don't belong to them that were stolen from other people or gotten somehow into the collective and um, is a cruel mistress in the sense that the collective, like I say, turns on you because you get old, let's say. And so you, you, you really, um, if you really want to know what's bothering you, it's be, you feel like something is missing. And indeed it is. And you need to get that back so that you can actually be you. And you can have this experience. There's no onus on the fact that you're a sinner and you've done things and the soul is gone and you're part of the collective. You do all that. There's no, you know, that you repent is all. You turn around and um, uh, somehow... The idea of reinserting your soul, it has to do with the point of exit of the, of the demon or the alien entity, you know, the, the, if you like, or the reptile or the thing that, that is, is an oversoul or a connector. And I can't get too technical with it because it's, you know, these are all metaphors trying to explain a spiritual reality. So it's that when that thing is gone and cast out, you know, somehow the you that is you uh, is present. You know, the point of entry, the point of exit is the point of entry or re-entry for the soul. And that's another thing that's not pointed out by um, that author that I was reading. You know, she talks about the exit point and the, and the insertion point, but doesn't talk about the re-entry point and the re-insertion point of the soul. It's not like this. It, I, a better metaphor would be you know, you're in the back seat of your own car. It's being driven by someone else, and you're you're bound and taught, you're gagged and bound. You can't move. You can't make a noise. You can't steer the car. 
It's just going down the, you know, and, and you're there witnessing it, kind of. Um, there's that aspect, but then there's also the aspect where people are just not home, where they're, they're absolutely nobody home. <clears throat> In other words, the soul gave up. It evacuated the vessel. There is no soul in that vessel. And there's another ask, there's another thing here where some of these people, these researchers think, you know, these UFO researchers think that the soul then is kept in a box once they extract it from you. Now, here's what I've witnessed. I witnessed them extracting it. I saw the person change. I saw it all happen overnight, uh, over and over again with various people. And so I don't know if they put the soul somewhere or what exactly. I, I don't know. I cannot verify that woman saying the soul is kept in a box. I know that, that people that have had abductions and things claim to have seen souls in boxes. And those souls are then traded for, for, for it's like trading cards. Uh, don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so eager to start jumping into... Um, mechanical concepts like that, like 3D sort of comic book concepts, because usually they bite you because they, we're talking about a multidimensional reality. I personally don't know where their souls went. I know some of them aren't themselves and never are again. I saw one guy, like a, like a, like a high school reunion type of thing, you know, 25 years later, there was nobody home, literally. He, he, he just wasn't there. And uh, I don't know what to tell you about it. I mean, he just wasn't there. There was just no soul there. And, and these people will never approve of you if you're not part of their collective. They somehow think they can win the game without a soul. And you can't. But getting into the, uh, you, you know, I, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about where the soul goes when it's extracted. Um. My feeling is that you're dealing with a multidimensional reality, which the soul is. But the you that is you is your soul. That's you, right? That's your heart, mind, spirit. That's the kind of the, the summation of your personality. Uh, it's you. And that you is the thing that can say, you know, I am. And meaning the fulfillment of John 17, which you're in the Godhead, the Godhead's in you, and you're intact as one. And that's a soul. As to where that soul is going uh, in the emancipation, the only place it can go ultimately is um, to the Lord, to the Creator. That's the only, you know, the consummation then becomes the consciousness that is born of the wedding between Creator and created, which then becomes one. And then that is the, the, the you know, the sunrise, the fulfillment, the whatever you want to call it. That is the eternal state of grace. That is the eternal bliss. That is the uh, the thing that is uh, the most satisfying. Although people who are running around as separate entities would say, "I got to fight. I don't want to go there. I want to fight that and have this individual life where I'm running and gunning, and you know, people are applauding me and whatnot." And 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 you know, I can't take that away from people. There are people that just need to go through that. Are there multiple incarnations? I believe there are. I believe the soul is in the end going to be God cannot create anything that isn't part of him that he hasn't created if he created it it's it's never going to be lost it can never be you know like you talk about hell well that could never be indefinitely because it would indicate a mistake on God's part you know these people were in error they're in hell forever and ever and God's sitting there laughing at it well there's no laughing matter he he can't create something that is hell forever because um, all things eventually return to the Lord. It's like a breath that goes out and comes back. It returns and including hells, heavens, whatever you want, it all returns to the Lord as light, as good, as a solid state of things. So, um, or a, I won't say a single point because there's no point. Lo, there's no locus for that point. It's everywhere and nowhere. But I would say this: that uh, that on the soul's journey to that point, there are many different things. One of which is to wake up from this 
um, collectivized um, sad world and realize that you're a soul. You're per At the soul level, I, I also don't believe the soul really learns. You know, I mean, you learn as a person. You know, it's almost like the soul comes in with with a with a, a with an agreed upon um, amnesia and relearns what it already knew. That I mean, that's kind of the way I'm looking at it, and uh, or the way I've perceived it. So, this idea that the soul is here to learn, and then having as many incarnations as the soul needs, and the soul is really the creator. In, in, in the end, the souls create this world because it needs to learn from this world. And so that's what's really going on with the world. That's a new age concept and I reject it. That is not what's going on, in my opinion. I've heard that since I was going, since I was a boy going down to the Bodhi tree looking for answers. Yeah, I was always hanging out with, you know, we we're always talking philosophy and spirit and spirit books and UFO books and books on philosophy. And, you know, I've always been one of those kind of people hanging around and trying to get all this, even at a very young age when I was younger than most of the people that I was hanging around with. Um, and so I've done, you know, I've paid my dues, I think, in this area. And I've, I've spent a lot of time. I know the Lord. I watched the sunrise here up over the uh, East Coast uh, Ocean on the North Carolina coast. And I see that beautiful sunrise. I, I just, a feeling sweeps over me. I hear a certain frequency of sound. It triggers, you know, a memory of, of a bliss, of, of, of an unconditional love, of, 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 you know, a feeling that I feel, but that I don't feel disconnected like God's over here and I'm over here. No, God's in me. I'm in God. You know, and if the Hindu guy says that or a Buddhist, well, Buddhist can't, wouldn't say it that way. But if various other people say it from whatever other walks of life they're from, that's fine with me. Um, you know, if, if, your soul is intact. God's had favor on you, and and in in a sense, and um, and God is Christ. Jesus Christ is God. God's it, as far as the narrative of the 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 the, the 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 Christ story. If you seek the truth, you'll find it. And that narrative you'll find is already in you. It's it's, it's just the most mysterious thing. But it's not something to browbeat people with. In other words, if you've got God, you've got Christ, you've got this, you've got that. People say, I've got God, I don't need Jesus. It's like, no. Someone said that to me. <laughs> yeah, one of our listeners will, will laugh when I say this again. But a certain doctor of medicine um, was just browbeating me about Jesus. He was on top of my case. He goes... You know, uh, Lao Tzu said this or, or that or, or, you know, some pithy statement, some wise statement. He goes, you know who said that? I, he goes, Lao Tzu. He said that 500 years before Jesus. So there, mm, showing himself to be a very immature person and showing himself to be unspiritual completely and totally carnal. So he blew his argument by his demeanor in that case. And then I felt like saying, you know, before Jesus was, I am. Of course, that would have confused him and you probably. He wouldn't understand that because, but that's an actual ac accurate statement. In other words, um, Jesus, another way of putting it, Jesus is God. So I think, you know, uh, and a better statement would be Jesus created Lao Tzu. But then again, that would get into my daddy is stronger than your daddy, you know, and I didn't want to do that. But I mean, that was just so ignorant. Can you imagine being attacked like that? And, and just pounding the table saying that was 500 years before Jesus and, and knowing the truth about eternity and Jesus and the identity and the mystery and, and sitting there and having to just button your lip and, not, and, 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 and take it without a retort. My friends, yours truly did such a thing. And I feel you know, a lot of these hits that I've taken really, you know, and that was a hit, all right. That was taken on my body. I took it in and I stuffed it down and it became... You know, probably another layer of fat somewhere, you know, just was, you know, trying to, trying, to, trying to build up layers as a buffer zone against the outside world, you know, but just so angry about Jesus. I was so angry about this idea. And it's like my Jesus and my, my, my you know, spiritual way with the Lord is, sounds kind of like, you know, might sound like someone from Oral Roberts University. But sounds like is where, where it ends. And what I'm saying is not at all what they're saying. 
you know, they want to put it in a three nice three D comic book and have you know a ch couple of chick tracks to back it up and sum it up and go point out some scriptures and be very mechanical about something that's not meant to be mechanical. Scriptures are meant to be, you know, doorways to further understanding, and they're not to be taken lightly. Um, you know, and and speaking of which, I think we need you know to to uh, identify well. Okay, let me just reread this again. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou gave, hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Says Jesus to the Father in a, in a separation point, but then later it goes, uh, that they may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Okay, so yes, it's important for, 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 for the Lord to, and for people to know that the Father sent Jesus, which is really sending himself in the flesh, right? The Word made flesh. And, um, you know, to, to die on a cross, let's say, uh, to make to to be sacrificed to be killed as a um as the final sacrifice to redeem the whole world okay so that's basically the narrative of christianity you know it's a it's a it's basically a um uh the 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 consciousness is a duality uh, good versus evil light versus dark devil versus god and all that stuff and you know mankind has fallen and uh so god comes in the form of his son to be sacrificed to then redeem the whole world because of the sacrifice, which, by the way, doesn't, you know, if the sacrifice is efficacy, then the whole world would be redeemed whether or not uh, you know about the narrative or not, it's redeemed, right? So, but then there's all these other shenanigans going on with the being, people being extracted and inserted and, you know, or, you know, demonic activity, you know, people being possessed and needed to be delivered in that way. And Jesus' ministry was very much about, you know, casting out devils, casting out demons, casting out the abductors, casting out those who would steal the soul and bringing the person back. So therefore, the soul must be in there somewhere or accessible. I don't, I think we put too much uh, emphasis on loci, locations, you know, uh, let's just say that the person's not in possession of their soul, they're not themselves. When they are in possession of their, their, of their souls, then they are themselves again. There's redemption available. I rely on Jesus Christ to get me through things. I pray in Jesus' name. And this is my understanding of consciousness and the world. That the world is basically a temporary passing thing that um, one cannot really build a home on no more than one could move into your sandcastle that you build on the beach because it's going to be swept away. Therefore, there must be some other purpose to life than just, you know, um, winning some trophy or something or having a trophy wife or husband or whatever it is and then feeling a sense of satisfaction. My friends, there is no satisfaction here because, again, for the umpteenth millionth time, it's passing away. Therefore, there is no permanent satisfaction with the things in this world, period. Ask any Satanist. They'll tell you they want more. They're not satisfied at, it, 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 you know, whatever amount of money or power. They want more, you know, and they feel like, well, I sold my soul anyway. And by the way, they all happen to have an innate idea that this world is it, and after this, they're going to suffer. They, they all seem to have that idea that they're not going to bypass some sort of judgment, which is very interesting that they the collectivist, the Satanist and the collective, that they would actually have an idea that they're going to pay for it, but they can't help themselves there. So they put all their effort into this world into something that's fading and passing in the hopes that they can make it permanent, which is, you know, which is where the robotics now have come in and bionics, you know, that they can somehow beat death. It is the saddest, most pathetic and more well, obviously stupid thing. The Ray Kurzweil's of the world are... You know, as Jethro Tull said, thick as a brick and they don't have a clue. You know, the geniuses are the stupid people. It's, I, I guess that's, that's what it finally comes down to. You already have, folks. You already have eternity at your doorstep. You just need to kind of realize it, which is... And, and, and heed to it, 
Um, I mean, there's, you know, having a passing thought or a realization isn't going to do it for you. Otherwise, a self-realization fellowship would be very successful in redeeming souls. I assure you it is not. Is The ones that I've visited, I applaud their efforts, but um, a person actually has to go through the experience. You can't just, you know, dole it out to people. That's why, you know, and <laughs> have you seen this? Po- I'm, I'm going to change the subject. Um, you know, I'm what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to impress upon you the the reality of how we, of what we face so that you can obviously get right and in tune with the Lord so that basically, you know, with the absolute, with the I am that I am that I am that I am that I am, with the I am that you are I am, you know, and there is no me, I am, and there is no you, I am, Christ, okay? It's not a collective. Um, we are in Christ. It's an oxymoron term. There is no we in Christ. I am in Christ. You as an I am in Christ. That's fine, but you can't be in Christ as a we. There is no we because there's no multiplicity ultimately. So uh, that's some headier stuff that gets more unsatisfying because I know all you don't want to give up your egos. The ego is the other thing, the sense of being a separate self. Now, Buddhism really deals with this. You are not um, a separate self, separate from God. That's just a fact. God cannot create anything that he is separate from. So, including you. And I'm not a separate self. We're actually, in a sense, part of the same thing, you know, and we're, and um, the same substance, ultimately. And uh, therefore, we are, if I fight you, I'm fighting myself, you see. If I fight a war, I'm fighting myself. If I go up against you in a court, I'm actually trying myself. And, and that's one thing Jesus tried to teach us, but we couldn't because we were so, you know, fear-based and gripped into this idea that we are separate selves. And, you know, I've gotten in a lot of trouble being a separate self myself where I have to assert my ego or my individuality over a thing and fight with another person. And then, then you know, resentment builds up and, and all that stuff happens. Um, in a power struggle between two two some two selves who are at one point the same, we don't want to see ourselves as one and the same, and it's not a new age concept. It's just basically, I'm talking about the you know in a, in a sense the mechanics of creation. Um, I am and you are not. I mean, this is an axiomatic truth. I am. There is no other. That's why ultimately. You know, um, there is no permanent state where something is rejected and in hell and God sits there looking at it as a separate separate from that hell. There's no such, there can't be any such. I'm not saying there's no punishment for people or, or you know, however that manifests. And that that is hell. I think in a sense, some of what I've gone through here has been, it's been so supernatural and so painful that I would call it hell. You know, um, not all of it, but I mean, you know, there's consequences for actions. And um, you make the wrong, you know, decision or, or do something that in some way harms somebody else. It comes back on you in some way, even if even if you didn't intend it to do harm, but it did. It's still, you know, if there's a bad vibe there. It's still going to come back on you in some way, you know. So it's like we all have to... None of us want to realize that. And further to this, the Satanists don't want to realize that the that the um, in their collective they're all separatists in the sense that they are each having an agenda and 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 each having this idea that the thing goes on indefinitely. Um, and you know they want to be reincarnated into you know better and better lives with more power, money, and whatnot. They want this to go on indefinitely. They don't want to acknowledge the spiritual reality or the reality of the uh, temporariness. They want to make it permanent and they want to stick because these beings that inhabit them cannot manifest in this world on their own. They need vessels. So that's why they've done all this genetic manipulation and everything to the, creating the different races of, of humans and whatnot. In my opinion, you know, I don't, I don't know that, you know, it's all kind of part of this amalgam, you know, but 
again, humans are created to, you know, I mean, in a sense, are modified so that they can somehow look at it from their perspective. It's like a factory and they're modifying humans and having enough humans so they can then occupy these vessels and have a life because that's the only way they can get in here. They can't get in here um, and stick and, and really manifest and live and be unless they occupy a created vessel. They can't do it. The frequency of their of their you know thing is just so you see them as like wisps and ghosts and like orbs and different things, but they can't stick here. They're kind of going in and out. You can't. It's like a TV reception that's kind of going in and out. That's at best. That's all they can do. They can occupy the TV. They can occupy electricity. They can. They need to occupy something that has a certain density. Otherwise, they're not getting in here. And they want to get in here, and they want to make it stick. And they want to be lords of this universe here in this 3D realm, but overcome the temporal nature of it, which they cannot do because it is temporal. That is the nature of it. And it's ridiculous to try to make something that's temporal, non-temporal. Can't be done. But they're trying to get, you know, in, in, but in their world, they are, I suppose they're solid in a way, you know, in a, in a way they understand. But to the way you and I would think of something solid, it wouldn't be. Ultimately, the new Jerusalem is just light, pure light. And so, and so a lot of people, these people don't want to go there. They know what it is. They don't want to go there. They, they, they want to resist and stay as separate selves. So they bind together in a collective to do so, like an insect hive. I don't know why. I, it's so dumb. It's beyond the dum de dum de dum de dum de dumbest of the dumb. You know, you're going to go anyway. It's like uh, someone fighting for the last five minutes and whoop, didn't get it. You know, they died because it was temporary. It was never meant to be permanent. There is no such thing as a legacy because this world is not going to go on indefinitely. So there are no such things as legacies. So people have a legacy, you know, that it's um, in a plaque on a wall somewhere, but then, then the society goes out and then someone, you know, an occupying army comes in and smashes the wall down and it gets pushed into the dust and that's the end of it. There is no legacy. Then they rewrite the history books to suit them and eradicate all the history and legacies that all these other people created. It's just ridiculous. All we can do is get right with God, with our creator, get to know our creator, get to under, get in the flow of nature in the sense that this is all this thing he's created, this beautiful tapestry of life on this beautiful globe, and just get in the swing of things with that. And that, that's what Taoism, you know, Lao Tzu, this, this guy was a Taoist, right, who jumped on me and said, Lao Tzu said that 500 years before Jesus. Um, the, uh, so Taoism sprung up from Lao Tzu's writings, okay? And, 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 and actually, technically, Taoism always existed, so there is no real beginning. Uh, but it's really getting the flow of the way of nature. In other words, you have nature gives, you know, yields that, that do a spiritual uh, wisdom and experience of getting in the flow of this nature equals um, being in a state of grace. And I, have, I do not disagree with that. So, um, but it is, Tao is called, is another name in Chinese, the Tao is the way. The way. Jesus is also called the way. So I guess Jesus was really the first Taoist because Jesus is the creator who created the world. So he would be the way um, ultimately a long time before Lao Tzu ever lived. But I mean, I don't want to, I'm not in a contest. It's all, it's all good. It's, you know, I've got no problem with the other religions or other ways of looking at things. Again, the important thing is that we get, first of all, we, that we in our vessels exist. That's very important because if you're not in, if you have no soul, but a collective of like your, your different personalities of egos that are living in there, each asserting themselves and being run by a demonic or alien entity that's running the show, i.e. you have to ask permission from the collective to be able to think a certain thing or do a certain thing. Um, that would be a state of, on top of losing your chance because of temporariness, 
It would be also a state of slavery where you're not allowed to live your life. You have to be, but, but, but you can be at a very high station. And you should be happy with that because you achieved your goal. You got to be king of whatever. Congratulations. But now we get into the, the real substance of what we're talking about. Well, but what is this you're the king of? But what is this whole thing? Is it like being the king of um, Pirates of the Caribbean? You know, I'm, I'm going to reference it to Disneyland. Is it being king of the... Uh, of the? Uh, I remember one time when I went away to a, a camp, a, uh, you know, for like five weeks during the summer, you know, kids go to this camp, and I remember... They, you, you, if you're really a good camper, you win like a, a pine cone that's colored as either silver or gold or whatever. And, you know, only a couple people get a gold cone, but if you, more people get a silver one. But these are coveted value prizes. I was just laughing to myself. It's like, so they staple a, 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 a little pine cone that falls off a tree to a little piece of leather that goes around your neck that you're supposed to wear to show everybody that you're really something. And they have a little ceremony where they take you out of the woods at night, out of your cabin, and give you this valued pine cone so that you really know that you really did it above and beyond the rest of them. You achieved. I did get a pine cone. I got one of them. Yep. And uh, it meant absolutely nothing. You know, in the end, it just it got, you know, crushed and thrown away and, you know, it had no value whatsoever. What value is there knowing that you get the pine cone and the rest of your campmates uh, didn't? And then they hate you. <laughs> Why did he get the pine cone? I didn't. Yeah. I used to get those kind of awards. Yeah, I, I was always at the top. Very competitive. And... Um, you know, until a certain realization hit me. And then after that, they, they, all these people that put me at the top put me at the bottom. And it's like, oh, is there something wrong with my attitude? And it's like, uh, you know, I want to see that same thing we saw back there at camp. I mean, let's get with the team, get with the program, and win. You know, it's like I, I, I put up my status the, the other day on Facebook. I just said, I'm done with the NBA. I'm done with the NFL. I'm done with the, uh, well, I never, I fell away from baseball a long time ago, but I'm done with the organized sports because, and I'm also done with rock and roll. I'm done with, you know, the music industry as well for the same reason, because it's just all, you know, it's just all become a, a vehicle for mind control. And I'm just not interested. So, but now I, I love doing my, Music. I love working with other people doing music. I, I enjoy music, for sure. Love the great forms of music, of American music, like blues and blues rock and rock and jazz. Love it. And, you know, I love dub and dubstep. And, well, dubstep's dead now, but, you know, some of the club beats I like, you know. I'm kind of, you know, I'm not against any of that stuff. But the industry itself is basically a vehicle for mind control. It always has been. You know, they use it to promote or evangelize for this collective. They use it to, you know, elect candidates who will promote this collective. And um, so now, turning to geopolitics, is it not, is it fully amazing to you that now they're openly saying what we predicted they would do? I mean, I have so many confirmations and predictions it's from years ago that have been confirmed right now. It's, it's, it's scary because I'm, I'm thinking, how much longer do we have? Uh, bottom line... Um, yeah, it doesn't matter how much longer we have or don't have. It's, it's an irrelevant question, actually. But they're openly saying the word communist, like as in uh, one politician said the other day, communism works, you see? So they're starting to openly call it communism now. And um, the leftist, left, like I say, liberals are communists, which is what I said a long time ago, but, that, but communists are actually Satanists. They're actually collectivists. So, and they're totalitarians. They have nothing to do with liberalism. They are totalitarians. They are authoritarians. They want to uh, clamp people down, put them in cages, and, uh, 
you know, torture them while they lord it over them. You know, that's basically what, you know, collectivists and totalitarians do. Um, they, they, they can't see beyond this world. They would never understand anything like I'm talking about. This would leave them in the dust intellectually. They would not get it, and that's fine. Um, there's quite a few conservatives that don't get it as well, and that's fine. I probably appeal to just a small percentage of uh, the population who is ready to hear such things. Not all people are ready. The bulk, 95% of them, are not ready to hear this message. There are other messages that will lead them along as they follow the bouncing ball toward this message. Um, you know, the, this message is really for more of the uh, souls that are kind of at the end of their journey and they are kind of ready to understand what it's all about and ready to, you know, to and ready to eschew religion and understand that, you know, your Christianity, your, uh, your concept of Jesus and uh, the whole blood sacrifice thing and the Old and New Testament, all that, it really ultimately had nothing to do with the real reality of the situation. It was leading you to a certain point. But so many of them um, wouldn't go where, where the, you know, the book of Revelation, let's say, toward the end was really heading. Now, in the book of Daniel, it says that, you know, the people that, that are evil are going to live in everlasting shame, everlasting, and people that are good are going to live in everlasting um, glory like the stars in the heavens. But that's not true. You know what I mean? That's just, that's just not, that's just, that's poetry. But that's not really the picture of what's going to happen. Or what has happened is happening and, and is, in a, is happening and has already happened and will happen. In other words, those are metaphors. You'll live on as stars in the heavens, proud, and you'll have your crowns of glory. And though evil ones, you're going to suffer and be tortured. And um, nobody gets away with anything. The people that need to be tortured, they are going to be tortured. They are tortured now. And people that are moving into these other realms, they'll, they'll go there. But this idea that they'll... they'll They'll be eternal like the stars in the heavens. There's the first misnomer there is in the book of Daniel. Let me correct the record. The stars in the heavens aren't going to go forever either. So it's a metaphor for saying if you're evil, you're going to suffer the fruits of being evil. If you're good, you're going to, you're going to, you know, it may be hard for you in this life, but you're going to reap rewards for being good. You know, yeah, there's a cause and effect. You reap what you sow. That's all that, that would, when Daniel says that, that's all he really means in my opinion. Because we are eternal, you know, it's all eternal. If God crunches up matter and form into a ball of light and then decides to create something else, nothing, nothing died, nothing was lost. Like Einstein said, it's just energy and matter are transformed. They're never, you don't extinguish it. It just it becomes something else. So most people want to hold on to this life. They want to run around the track one more time. They want to ring the bell just one more time. They want to get the accolades. They want to, you know, just one more time around. And I'm saying that if, if, if you're ready to, if, you, if birth is going to happen, that the, uh, the, the woman in travail who is about to give birth, she can't, you know, she, she's going to have her baby right then and there. If she can't, another run around the track isn't going to happen. If it's time for birth, it's time for birth. It's going to happen. What we are now is in a pre-birth state. We are going to be born, but it's like a supernova in a way, and then it, then it morphs into something else. It's like this grand, wonderful adventure, but in order to go on it, we have to give up. You know, it's ironic. We end up giving up our, individual, our individuality, in a sense, which is our crowns that we throw into the, uh, the center because we don't need it anymore. When we don't need that individuality, we realize... We are I am. I am, and there's no differentiation. There's no difference between I am and I am. I am is I am. So a lot of food for thought there. But mainly, the main, the main response you should have is to be at peace, knowing your God is God, knowing that God loves you and that it's all love. And that all of creation, creation is an act of love, as you know, just from having babies, it's an act of love. You know, love making is an act of love, you know, when it's, when it's in its right form and not just, you know, trashy lust, which demeans people. It, 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 it uh, 
it makes people into um, subhuman. You know, it's it turns people into cheap cheapness. Uh, you know, it, it 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 it's it's a an act against reality. Actually, um, I'm not saying people don't do it, and people have plenty of lust and and plenty of sexual whatever. I mean, there are people that have they'll have sex with uh, logs and you know other an, you know animals, and they'll do anything you know to 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 get off. I guess you know. When that's out of balance, there's no stopping it. That's a force that's out of balance, and they're gonna. It's gonna manifest in a lot of different ways. And what the collective is trying to do is get hold of that power and say it's all good. So however it has to happen, it's it's worthy and valuable. Let, let no one say anything against any of the diversity of sex. And um, I'm certainly not here to argue with them on that point. I don't care what people do uh, in their sexual lives or. Because to me, sex, like everything else here, is passing. As you get older, you won't care about sex. So it's passing. It's, it's the end-all and be-all when you're 25, and then it fades from view. But to be putting a lot of time on it, to be putting a lot of emphasis on you know, transvestites' rights or transgender rights or whatever, and, and, you know, thing, and to put an, em an emphasis on the gay thing, it is really stupid. I mean, it really is. Um, you know, it's like I have to look the other way and just say, "I'm sorry, Lord." You know, as humans, you know, this is. These are people who believe they're going to live forever, and you know, they're going to be. This is it. This is the end all and be all. So, gay rights is you know these rights, those rights. Gay marriages, you know, if you don't conduct a gay marriage, they're going to strip you, of, defrock you, as it were. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. It's embarrassing, you know, to re represent, you know, if we had to represent the human race somewhere and they showed a video of that behind me, you know, like I was the ambassador going to another planet to represent if there was such a thing as other planets and, and, you know, castles and whatnot. Um, and I would, you know, they were running a tape of the, you know, of, of, of all this stuff. And I'd say, yeah, we are very, I would say, yes. Unfortunately, humans are very blind and reactionary. In other words, if you're going to have a marriage, I'm going to have one in my own way or, you know, whatever. It, it's just, oh, God, you know, you wish. Because that's got nothing to do with what's going on. You know, straight sex, gay sex, this sex, that sex has nothing to do with what's going on. Uh, the, this marriage, that marriage, this you know, has nothing to do with what's going on. If people want to make laws to make themselves feel better, that's got nothing to do with it. That's fine. Go ahead. Do it. You know? But it's got nothing to do with what's going on. <laughs> At all. What we, what we want to do is we want to advance into this state of grace, of peace, of love, of, of um, a feeling of eternality, a feeling of permanence even with the changing tides of the forms of being okay and that harmony and that frequency that we want to live in creates a happy harmonious chirping bird kind of e tweet 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 you know individual that's just dancing and singing and having joy you know having real unfettered joy having real uh, uh the the weight taken off your shoulders folks so that you can breathe, so that you can love. You know, part of the reason we don't love each other is because we just can't. Because we're so hampered with the weight of the world. And then, you know, what the world calls love, of course, is lust. So that, <laughs> all that leads to is, you know, uh, playing pinball. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's we're riding a little, uh, a little go-kart and, and, you know, playing dodge, dodge go-kart at the uh, amusement park. It's fine. You can go do it, but it's, it's a lot of noise signifying nothing. I seem to get to this frustrating point, don't I, each time. And, uh, it's this difference between taking hold of it and having the joy versus the sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach that we're, we're losing that it's all been lost and we're losing nothing I'll, I'll turn into geopolitics um, it's not over 
you know, they may like it to be the end and all the uh, Christian end time prophets are screaming, this is the end, repent. It's not over. It's never over. It's just a dance of light and shadow and being and, and uh, you know, forms and dimensions and, you know, clouds and clearness and all kinds of things. It's oceans of uh, diverse things until it isn't. But in terms of over, no, this is not over. In terms of World War Three, well, there may be a World War Three, but it's not over. This situation right now is not over because the people will rise up and already are to then quash the totalitarians, which are fewer in number, okay? And um, the, the, the rapidity of the wake-up uh, that's happening has, has gotten them to, to now be discussing um, pulling the trigger on humanity as a humane thing to do since we no longer need humans because the future is robots and machines, so there's no more need for humans to do labor except for a few to, you know, like Tom Cruise and Oblivion, to take care of the, you know, their weapons of not mass destruction, but I would say some destruction, uh, you know, to make sure their, 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 their robots are in good working order. But, uh, so therefore, we don't need billions of people. We can go ahead and reduce the population to, you know, a few million, I guess, or just get rid of humans altogether and come up with more of a, a, a third alternative, you know, so a fourth alternative, some fifth generation, um, you know, thing. So they're thinking that way and they're discussing whether or not they should just end it, you know, like they, like they're in charge. Someone told them they were in charge. And so they're discussing whether it be humane or not to do it through like a fake war, World War Three, where people light nukes up and, you know, you act like it's all organic, but it isn't, right? It's just a way of kind of depopulating or just go ahead and have a worldwide plague, take out all the humans and then go with another. The, the you know, Bible talks about tremendous loss of life, a third of humans, and another third. That's 66 and two-thirds percent right there. So, yeah, and the seas and whatever. Could they cause that kind of catastrophe? You bet, but it's still not over. It's never over. That's my point. Um, End-time prophecy is there to scare people into repentance, but some of you don't need to be scared. You're already, you came from being scared about all that, right? But now you're, you've, you've got to kind of realize what you are as a soul and get in the swing of that, of where your soul's journey is going. It may not be spinning around end times Christianity circles. It may be something else may be calling you. I don't know, what, whatever, but... Um, you know, going around the same old, same old every time. My feeling is that, uh, like I say, it may scare people into realizing that God is the main thing and that, you know, it's so scary that we can't hold on to anything here. We go to God, God help me, you know. There's nothing wrong. That's great. That's a way of our souls screaming for some kind of help. But then there's got to be a, 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 a beyond that. And certainly, if we could take hold of that, we would end fear. Fear would be out of our stomachs, because that's where it resides. You feel it in the pit of your stomach, fear, right? A loathing. Um, Self-loathing and fear. Failure. Being lousy. Being no good at anything. Being hurtful. Being shallow. Being worried about yourself in some way of reflection. And um, we're trying to overcome that. So I'm going to go ahead and go because we've got some traveling to do today in uh, North Carolina. It was a beautiful place. And uh, we'll see you on the, on the next thing we do, whenever that is. At the time, you're free to move about the cabin to retrieve any personal belongings. We do ask to be careful when you open the overhead that any articles might have shifted toward the flight. 
If you need information about ground transportation, baggage claim, connecting flight, the uniform agent needs this flight, we'll be happy to assist you. On behalf of your Los Angeles based in flight crew, it's been our pleasure bringing her today and hope to see you again on a future Delta flight. Thank you and have a good morning.